Hello everybody and welcome to the Rectory Dining Room yet again. It seems to be quite a habit and I think uh, if what I'm hearing is correct then it will be for a little while longer. So um, it's nice to welcome you here. I hope before too long we can welcome you here in person but for the time being um, we do it through a screen and today is Trinity Sunday so we look forward to uh, a summer of what's normally known as ordinary time. I suspect this year it'll be anything but ordinary as we try to get back to normal from being locked down as we learn to live with the virus which seems in its strange way to have infiltrated all of our lives and forced us to learn to adapt in different ways. But nonetheless, God, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit, is no more or less with us than he ever was. So we look forward to uh, the presence of God on this Sunday, recognising that rather like the tripod that's holding up my phone at the moment, we need three bases for our faith to be secure. God, the Father who created the world, God the Son who redeemed us, who shared our life, died with us and for us and rose again. And God the Holy Spirit who is the presence of the Father and the Son with us all the time. Uh, thank you this week to Jelaine who is going to be preaching, uh, to Mark who is reading and Deb who will be leading our intercessions. And as usual, um, I will simply, uh, where there are unusual responses, give you a little bit of sp space just to repeat them yourselves if you would like to. Um, otherwise, we will use the uh, words that you'll all be pretty familiar with. And if you have uh, brought some bread and wine out so that for you, this becomes the body and blood of Jesus. The Holy Spirit isn't contained by being in one place or limited uh, in blessing things. So we, we offer to God uh, this bread and wine. Um, and we look forward to the time when what they symbolise in the way of fellowship will become real for us all once again. And so on this Trinity Sunday, it's a simple response to start with. What is God like? God is caring and tender. What is God like? God is slow to anger. What is God like? God is rich in kindness. Maker, Jesus, Holy Spirit, God welcomes us with love. Join in with our prayer of preparation if you can remember the words, I'm sure you will. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And in a moment of quiet, we bring our sins and failings to God. Knowing that in Jesus, we are forgiven and set free. Father, you come to meet us when we return to you. Lord, have mercy. Jesus, you died on the cross for our sins. 
Christ, have mercy. Spirit, you give us life and peace. Lord, have mercy. And Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And collect for Trinity Sunday. Holy God, faithful and unchanging, enlarge our minds with the knowledge of your truth and draw us more deeply into the mystery of your love that we may truly worship you. Father, Son and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And over to Mark for our reading. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 13, verses 11 to 13. Goodbye, my friends. Do better and pay attention to what I have said. Try to get along and live peacefully with each other. Now I pray that God, who gives love and peace, will be with you. Give each other a warm greeting. All God's people send their greetings. I pray that Lord Jesus Christ will bless you and be kind to you. May God bless you with his love and may the Holy Spirit join all your hearts together. This is the word of the Lord. Just take a moment to reflect on those words before we move over to Jelaine for the Gospel reading and the sermon. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Today's reading is taken from Matthew 28 verses 16 to 20, the commissioning of the disciples. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Dear Lord, may thy divine will be done this day, and may all who help in this COVID crisis be filled with thy light and protect in their spiritual calling. Amen. In the Gospel reading today, we hear the final words of Jesus spoken to the disciples. They linger in our memory just as much as they must have lingered in the memories of those 11 remaining men 2,000 years ago. On first blush, this passage seems simple. It is Jesus telling the disciples to go out into the world with his blessing, to teach, baptise and evangelise. These words have become known as the Great Commission. But closer reading and reflection reveals that it is really not as straightforward as it seems. The 21st century dictionary definition of the word commission is an instruction, command or role given to a person or group, or alternatively, a group of people entrusted by a government or other official body with authority to do something. But of course, that's today's definition. 2000 years ago, the disciples weren't thinking along those lines. They were simply wondering what on earth it was that Jesus was telling them to do. What Jesus is telling them to do is that he has the authority and the standing to authorise their future actions. If the disciples had been paying attention and had been listening carefully to what Jesus had been saying to them during the preceding months leading up to the crucifixion, 
then his words here should have come as no surprise. In his last words to them, Jesus is repeating the instructions that he has for them to continue his ministry after he has gone. He has told them these before, and now he is telling them once again for the very last time. Matthew's Gospel has a pretty good record of this. In Matthew 10, verses 1, 5 to 7, he told them that they would go out into the world to do his work. In 24, verse 14, Jesus tells them that the good news of the kingdom is to be proclaimed throughout the world as testimony to all the nations. And it's these sentiments that appear again in today's passage. Of course, Jesus has the authority to speak in this way and to give his official sanction to the disciples because he now has both heavenly and earthly authority. For the disciples who were paying attention, they would have remembered that he also told them this earlier. And Matthew 25 verse 32 reminds us that this is so. Today, Jesus has told them that the roles that they are expected to undertake are an expansion of their current role as a follower of him. In the future, they will be able and expected to firstly teach, and that was, is going to be a new role for them because up until this time, the role of teaching lay firmly with Jesus himself. But now the disciples are to take on that mantle in order that the Christian faith is enabled to grow and take root across the world. Secondly, they are now going to be able to baptise. And Jesus says to them, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit is particularly significant. And I pause here for a moment to draw your attention to the significance of the word and in that sentence. Because by using the word and to link together Father and Son and Holy Spirit, it knits together the Trinity as an entity, the power and the unity of the divine. So this, in this passage, Jesus makes it plain to the disciples that he literally has no time for doubters or naysayers. He understands that there will be times that people will doubt, but he wants them to be firm and resolute. He wants total commitment from them. And furthermore, Jesus has grand expectations of their ministry. He wants them to travel to all nations, to expand the horizons of the Christian message and take it out and away from the biblical lands where the disciples grew up. Common sense tells us that taking out the message to all nations across the world was going to be literally physically impossible for these 11 men. But probably what Jesus meant here was more in a metaphorical way if the disciples travelled out beyond the boundaries of the lands that they were used to and imparted the message, then that message would literally spread like wildfire from word of mouth and eventually the written word and it would expand out through all nations. And we know that that did happen because history tells us that the disciples spread far and wide. For example, John went to Greece Thomas went to India and Matthew ended up in Ethiopia. And of course, today we can see that the Christian message has spread right across the globe. But lastly and importantly, Jesus tells them, remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. He knew that it was going to be hard for them, that it would be dangerous, uncomfortable, tiring, and it would call on every single ounce of their inner resolve to carry out his instructions. But at the end of the day, he was going to be there for them, to love them, support, cherish them, and be with them alongside them as they undertook this mammoth task. Because he had confidence that they could do it. He had faith in them just as they had faith in him and just as we continue to have faith in him today. Amen. And in a moment of quiet, as we hand over to 
Deb for the intercessions. We uh, bring our own prayers and thoughts to God. Those things which concern us, which maybe we wouldn't want to say in front of others, or those things which we find difficult even to express in words. It is comforting to remember that our Lord is omnipotent and omnipresent. So Lord, be with us as we join together in prayer wherever we are. Father, we give you grateful thanks for the love you pour on each one of us. We ask you to bless the world community of our church and all who minister in it continuing to give pastoral care in these unprecedented times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we particularly thank you for the modern means of communication that enable us to worship together in a whole new way. And we bless you for endowing people with ingenuity and skill to overcome so many of the current problems. Guide scientists, researchers, statisticians, and all those working together in their efforts to combat this global threat. Inspire them with new ideas and methods and a spirit of cooperation to succeed in their tasks. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to ask your blessing and protection for all who work in the fields of medicine and care, especially those who are still on the front line facing the coronavirus. We give thanks for them and all people serving in vital roles which support our daily lives. Help us in our turn to be generous and giving in whatever ways we can to our family, friends, neighbours and strangers. These odd times have released us to reach out more and even a smile or greeting can have extra meaning. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember people who've been affected by disaster this week. We bear in our hearts those who've been affected by the death in Minneapolis and the wave of anger and following civil unrest that this has really unleashed. Help the communities who are affected by injustice and cruelty all over the world to find ways to change to fairer systems and restore the peace you intended in our world. We pray for your kingdom to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, be close to those who are suffering in pain or distress, either through mental or physical illness. We pray for those who are in financial or relationship turmoil. We pray for those who have been bereaved. In a moment of quiet, we name people in need who are known to us and who are in our hearts today. We trust that they will all know the comfort of your grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Help us to continue to stand firm in our resolve and constantly renew our trust and hope in your eternal love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so we come to the peace. And don't forget that you shall share the peace with whoever is in your household and maybe around you at the moment. 
Or if you can't do that or you're on your own, please don't forget that you're not on your own. Uh, there are a lot of people every week now who share in this experience and who are sharing the peace with you as you are with them. Peace to you from God, our Heavenly Father. Peace to you from his Son, Jesus Christ, who is our peace. Peace from the Holy Spirit, the life giver. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. And we share the peace with one another. So we bring these gifts before God as the grain once scattered in the fields and the grapes once dispersed on the hillside are now reunited on this table in bread and wine. So Lord, may your whole church soon be gathered together from the corners of the earth into your kingdom. Amen. The Lord be with you also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your son Jesus Christ to be our saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And now we give you thanks, most holy God, holy and undivided Trinity, because you have given us the night of the light of the knowledge of God in the face of Jesus Christ, that we may grow into your likeness and be changed from glory to glory. And so we gladly thank you with saints and angels praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord, and as we obey his command, Send your Holy Spirit that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory great is the mystery of faith christ has died christ is risen christ will come again Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms and bring us with Peter, Francis and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. 
through Christ, with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. And so we pray as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory for ever and ever amen We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. And so all you who hunger and thirst for a better life, for a deep life, a faith, for a better world, here is the bread of life. Feed on it with gratitude. Here is the cup of salvation. Drink from it and believe. The gifts of God for the people of God. I'd like to share with you a short prayer. It's called Transformation, written specially for Trinity Sunday by someone called Pat Bennett. I need your touch, O oh my Creator, the Father's touch of healing, pain released, brokenness remade, the marred image restored. The sun's touch of love, frozenness melted, loneliness assuaged, tears turned to laughter. The spirit's touch of liberation, freedom from the past, power for the present, courage for the future. Touch me, O oh my creator that I may be transformed. Lord God, you feed us with the living bread from heaven. Renew our faith, increase our hope and strengthen our love. Teach us to hunger for Christ who is the true and living bread and to live by every word that comes from your mouth through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
Amen. So be strong and happy. Help one another. We will walk together in hope. Work with each other. Live in peace and justice. We will walk together in joy. Try to grow perfect. Bless one another. We will walk together in love. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us this day, this coming week and the days and weeks ahead. But forevermore. Amen. And whatever it is you do next, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you for joining us, whether you're a regular part of the Frimley congregation or you're joining in from other places, as I know quite a lot of you are now. Go in peace the peace of God who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Please keep an eye on the website, all the notices will be on there and also for those of you, for her, many of you for whom it's important, all the birthdays are on there as well. Uh, so please remember those who are celebrating and sometime in the future I'm sure we will have one huge birthday celebration to scoop up everybody who's missed out in the last few weeks. But as yet, um, although there are certainly rumours around, uh, we are hearing that there may be an announcement about um, churches re maybe reopening sometime in the next week or so. Uh, nothing is going to happen until that announcement, until our bishops have announced what they would like to do or like us to do. Uh, and we have made all the preparations which will make that possible. Uh, we hope it won't be too far away, but um, for the mean, for now, we worship God where we are. We enjoy meeting up with one another, which we can do in each other's gardens, at least if the weather permits. Uh, and we still look forward to that day when one day we will be reunited. So take care. God bless you all. Uh, and I'll see you next week. Good morning all. Um, as usual, slight chaos in my house, added to by the fact that Dave has now gone back to work, so we are flying solo. Please forgive any noise you hear in the background. <clears throat> so this morning's selection, we have got Alleluia, Sing to Jesus. Uh, one for the children this morning, Our God is a Great Big God. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. From heaven you came. And then finally, to finish off with, oh Lord my God, can't beat that for a Sunday morning. So here we go with Alleluia, Sing to Jesus.
so slight mishap next up is in fact from heaven you came or the servant king as some of you might know it more
happy and safe week ahead. Those of you that are going back to work, back to schools, we are facing the same things in our house and getting used to everything all over again. Lots of love to you all. Keep safe, keep well, and I will see you soon.